Let's start out with a rat tail or a pigtail splice. We just bear off our wire. How much will depend on, on the gauge of the wire and so on. But you just twist them together. Now this is going to be kind of stout, so I'll finish it out with a pair of pliers. But you want two or three turns of, of good, clean, bare wire uh, out there for your splice. And get my pair of pliers here. Finish it out. Like that. And then we will go mount this up and solder it. I'm going to start out here towards the tip. I like to start away from the insulation. Uh, that puts the least, uh, or the insulation under the least uh, heat for the shortest period of time I can do it. And okay, so we wet the we wet the tip. We get our heat flow going. Move along. And that should do it. So I've trimmed off the sharp end and now it's ready for taping or shrink wrapping or whatever I'm going to do to, to protect that. All good soldered connections begin with a good mechanical connection. In this case we're just going to kind of intertwine these these uh, wires. Let's make, make sure you can see that. Um, and then we're just going to twist them. Now on heavy duty wire this is not easy to do. But with a finer wire it's not too bad. So the nice thing about this joint is it's low profile and once it's soldered you can tape it or shrink wrap it and it's uh, it's nice and low. I'm going to use a finer solder and a finer uh, soldering gun because the wire is smaller. Once again we'll start out here in the middle and we'll work both directions. And I'll try to avoid touching the tip. Get that drip off of there. Okay, that should do it. Let's do a variation on the last one where we mesh two uh, wires together. But instead of twisting them, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to pretend that these are two really grungy pieces of wire, that they're corroded, and that we've scraped on them as best we can. We've got you know, a little bit of clean copper, but not much. You know, It's still that nasty black stuff. So here's a variation that can help in an emergency. It's not a permanent cure, but I've used it on marine engines and so on. Uh, and let me show you what the next step is. I've wrapped this. This is about a foot of wire, by the way. Um, and you don't need quite this much. You can leave uh, like little gaps in between the wire to help solder flow through. But I've also left a gap in between the two sides in order to allow, hopefully allow solder underneath here. What we're trying to do is we're trying to get as many of the spots on the dirty wire connected together to form one continuous electrical path. And, you know, for the circumstances, this is about the best you can do. Okay, so let's go solder this up and, and see what we get. Okay, I've got it all soldered up. still kind of warm. And as you can see, it just makes, it's like a nice tube around the wire. And the concept is to bring as many of the uh, little spots of good copper in contact with the, the new wire, uh, join it all together and make a single electric pathway through there.
let's say that we need to join these two long pieces of wire together to make maybe an antenna for our crystal radio. Maybe we need to repair a break in a wire. Uh, we need a, a joint that's going to really hold together well. It's going to be strong. It's got to be able to hold the weight of the wire over a long distance. So what we're going to use is we're going to use a lineman splice. Our first step is to ensure that we have really good clean copper. That's always the first step. But the second step here will be to put a 90 degree bend in both of these pieces. So this right hand piece has this 90 degree bend and this left hand piece has this 90 degree bend. And what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this uh, this piece up here, we're going to wrap it around the left side and the left side piece where it bends down We're going to wrap around the right side piece. So I'll start one of these sides It's I can't keep this on in focus on the camera But I'll do one side and then I'll come back and show you that and then we'll do the other side So what I've done is I've wrapped that left side tail around this right side and now I'll go back and I'll wrap this tail uh, around this side over here and then we will solder it up. So this is our wrap joint. It's definitely mechanically secure. It uh, would probably be okay by itself but adding solder to it will ensure that over time water doesn't leak in here and you get a film of corrosion between the two wires. So yeah, uh, let's go ahead and solder this and uh, we'll finish it out. This joint takes a lot of heat and a lot of solder. Um, since there's no insulation on this wire, it doesn't really matter where we begin. We just want to make sure that we carefully get solder all the way through the joint. And oh, a little too much solder. Okay, let's let it cool and take a look at it. What we're looking for in a good joint is to ensure that we've had solder penetration throughout the joint. And as you can see here, we have solder that uh, has wetted the wires here. And we should look back the other direction. And yes, we have the same. So we have solder through, wetted here and here. So we have solder throughout the joint, and that's what we need. This joint will uh, carry the weight of the wire, and in fact, the wire itself will break long before the joint gives way. These are my solder type butt splices, and yes, they can be crimped, and there is a style that's crimp only, but the package when I bought these specifically said solder type you put them on a piece of wire like this they come with a hole right here to introduce the solder which is one difference and you just trim off the wire kind of short and insert it in there and then uh, introduce the solder i like to leave a little bit of copper on each end so i can introduce solder uh, there and here as well as in the middle okay so let's solder this thing up The trick to this is getting enough heat. You have to get your thermal conduction going. Okay, introduce it into the hole. Now this, I doubt, is legal for electrical wiring in your house. Um, but it is good if you if you need to cut open like a circuit, like you have a low voltage circuit, you need to cut it open and and do some testing, whatever, and there's just not enough wire left to uh, to make another type of joint splice. Um, so yeah, this is perfectly adequate for that. It's not terribly strong, but if you've got no other option, it's good. Okay, let's take a look. Now, of course, if you could crimp and solder, that's even better. This does need to be protected with shrink wrap or tape or something. But, uh, yeah, I mean, there's no way I could pull this apart. Uh, but it's not going to be as strong as the other joints. Uh, this is what you use if you have no choice. Okay, well, that's it for a butt splice.
There are different ways to make a three-way splice. One of them is I can just take and I can wrap this yellow wire around this low voltage uh, outdoor wiring. And yeah, that's okay, but you know, they can pull loose. You can pull it and it'll unravel. Uh, there's a better way. Let me show you. Uh, uh, this uh, involves putting a knot in it actually, and it makes it basically, it's not gonna unravel. This is good, this will be good for things like uh, antennas, if you're gonna run a crystal radio antenna or uh, some other like ham radio antenna. Um, uh, it's not for high voltage, so uh, yeah, and not for like house wiring, anything like that. So what I'm gonna do here, the only trick to this is, as I do this, I'm gonna wrap it around here, and I am going to go up. See, I'm above the yellow wire. I'm going up this direction. I'm going to come around and then I'm going to go down and this is where it locks it. I'm going to go down below the yellow wire and I'm going to keep wrapping. It looks like I kind of overdid it with the uh, amount of wire but you want two or three good wraps below and that will do it. Um, I'll have to finish this out with pliers. This wire is too stiff for my fingers. But there we are. And again, I'll finish that out with a pair of pliers and then we'll solder it. The benefit of this joint is it's really strong. But one of the drawbacks is it takes a lot of heat and a lot of solder to to make this happen. Okay, let's let it cool and we'll take a look at it. And let's make a quick inspection. Yeah, looks okay. If you're gonna be soldering splices into any kind of a paired wire like this, like a zip cord, one of the best things you can do is stagger your splices. There's two reasons for that. The first reason is safety. The chance of these two areas coming in direct contact, say if the insulation moves or comes off, is very low. The second reason is if you shrink wrap or tape these two separate areas, you're going to end up with two small low profile bumps in the wire as opposed to say like one big lump. That will make, uh, well it'll make it better looking. Plus the fact if you pull the wire, a big bump will snag on things and just cause problems. So here's our tip is if you're going to join a, uh, a zip type wire or a paired wire, then stagger your splices.